So what's up guys? Ant Canada here. Welcome to the Ant Canada Ant channel. And as usual, it's a late upload. I'm so sorry guys. I've been super busy answering all of your awesome, awesome emails, fulfilling your orders, also coordinating the GAN project, which is really great because people are selling ants and buying ants and it's just all of this ant goodness just circulating all around and it does take time but I love doing it and thank you for watching another video. So for this week's video I wanted to do a Q&A video, haven't done one of these for a long time. A lot of you guys have been emailing me with some great great emails and I just wanted to create a video to answer some of them because a lot of the questions sometimes are repetitive which is fine because I don't mind taking the time to answer your great emails and help you guys out with your end keeping experience. Okay, our first question comes from Chase Thomas. Can mating happen inside the formicarium? Well, Chase, uh, usually it doesn't. You see, ants, they engage in what's called a nuptial flight. So during mating season, they will fly out into the air outside of the nest. Um, and I'm talking about the elates, of course, the virgin males and queens and they mate far away from the nest actually. Mating generally happens away from the nest and one of the reasons why I know this is because I once found a mating flight about to happen, like a swarm happening on location at the nest and I collected some queens nearby, you know, that had broken off their wings and that sort of thing and turns out all 20 of the queens were infertile. They were not fertilized, they ended up dying um, and uh, it was quite the disappointment. And I had heard from a biologist friend of mine that queens and males generally mate far away from the nest. So if ever you do see a nuptial flight swarm happening right at the location of a nest, I recommend that you guys kind of walk a block away or something because usually that's where the mating happens. And actually this is great um, for the ants because it means that there's less inbreeding going on and greater chance of uh, breeding, you know, uh, of siblings not mating with each other, but mating with unrelated uh, queens and males. So to answer your question, mating usually doesn't happen inside the formicarium. It's said that Myrmica possibly mate inside the nest. Um, this is all speculation though. I don't think there's any proof of that. Um, I did have a Myrmica colony once, and I did catch males trying to mate with workers, oddly enough. But uh, I never knew, I, there was no evidence of them mating with queens. So, uh, so there. So, mating does not happen inside the formicarium. Next, a uh, question from Jacob Pouch. I want to raise ants so I can eat them. Your containers will help make that a clean process. What ants would be best to eat? Uh, well, Jacob, in Thailand and places in Southeast Asia, they eat weaver ants and weaver ant pupae and larvae and stuff. Um, but I know that you are from North America because I saw you post in our Facebook group. So, and I know you're from Canada, right? Um, I would recommend probably a really hardy and large uh, species of ant. I would say any carpenter ants, so Campanotis ants would be a great choice, but just to note, they do take a while to get started. I would say about two years until they get to the size where you can harvest like a handful every day. Our next question comes from Jan Quick Boom. I don't want to register on the website and I want to buy the small Laceous hybrid nest. Can you give me the number from the bank where I must pay the money to? Uh, well, Jan. Uh, unfortunately, we only accept PayPal payment because it's secure that way. Even if you don't have a PayPal account, you can still pay by credit card through the website. And all of that is securely through our AntsCanada.com website. We get thousands and thousands of orders and we won't scam you. Um, the website is secure. So please order from the website with your credit card or PayPal account. Okay, question number four comes from Benjamin Nelland. I would like to participate in the GAN project as I have noticed that there are no people in the Northern Territory that participate in the GAN project. Wow, that's awesome. Northwest Territories? That's awesome. I can't believe there are ant keepers there. Um, okay, the requirements for joining our GAN team. Uh, oh, for those of you guys who don't know what the GAN project is, it's basically an initiative worldwide where we make it possible for ant keepers to sell 
well and colonies to people in their city. So then there's no shipment of ants, there's no illegal transport or import of ants. And hey, if you are an ant keeper, why not make some extra cash uh, doing what you love, right? And a lot of our again farmers are making some good money selling um, their ants. And a lot of people in the cities where our Dan farmers exist are totally happy because they're able to purchase ants in case they cannot catch queens themselves. Okay, so here are the requirements to join the Gan team uh, to become a Gan farmer in your city. You must be 18 years or older. Um, and if you're a minor, this venture needs to be a joint venture between you and your parent or guardian. Um, and they will need to fill out the application for you and send us all required info, including uh, phone number, email, scan of proof of ID, address, etc. So if you're under 18, you'll need your parents' uh, help and collaborative efforts. Um, but if you're over 18, great, you qualify. You must also have at least one queen with at least one worker to sell. Um, and the reason why we do that is because, you know, you might have a queen and she might not be fertilized and then say you sell that off and then your customer gets this queen that never lays eggs. And so we have this policy where we only sell queens with at least a worker or if she's really, really fat and she's got a nice big pile of brood going, she's likely fertilized and we'll make the exception and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to sell that. Um, but we deal with that on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, and finally, you must have a valid PayPal account so that we can pay you. All transactions on the GAN project, they happen on through PayPal online. And the reason for this is because when you meet the customer, there's no exchange of money. And this helps because the customer already has paid and the customer won't you know, cop out on you and just not show up, which tends to happen a lot when um, you're doing an exchange of, I don't know, pets and they're going to pay you in person and they just don't show up. But if they've already paid, the chances of them showing up to your agreed place to make the exchange of the ants um, is, uh, is greater. All right, so question number five from Matthew Schultz. Hello, Ants Canada. I have a question. If you move your colony to a formicarium, but the ants have like 20 workers, what should I feed them? Because I don't think... 20 workers can eat another insect? Yes, okay, good question. So if your colony is only at 20 workers or it's just still young, I recommend you do not feed an entire living insect. Chances are your ants will have trouble trying to overpower this insect unless it's like a fruit fly or something. But what I recommend is you take a part, you rip a an insect like you i don't know rip a cricket in half very cool i know but needs to be done um or offer a cricket leg or that sort of thing i love these super worms i happen to have them here super worms yes zoophobus species from the tropics and you can just cut those up and drop them in your world and your ants will relish the goodies inside so there you go math Matthew Schultz, do not offer a live full insect if your colony is still young. Do them a favor, help them out, kill the insect. All right, then uh, question six comes from Justin Brazil. My Formica queen has laid five eggs already. I was just wondering how long does it usually take for them to turn into ants? She's kept in a warm room. Okay, great. You're doing a great thing, uh, Justin, by keeping your Formica queen in a warm room. And see, she's already laid eggs for you in your test tube setup. I have found that Formica brood tends to develop really quickly. I think one time I had a Formica egg reach pupil stage in, I think, like under two weeks. It was crazy. Um, and then usually it's uh, another few days until they become workers. So I would say about three weeks or so, maybe four weeks, I don't know. Uh, you should be able to have your first nanitics. Congratulations on the newborns. Question number seven comes from Calvin Wall. Hello, my son has a gel farm that is used with harvester ants. The ants we've been purchasing have been coming from the US and often get held up in customs. When the ants arrive, they're mostly dead. Do you sell harvester ants? Okay. This is a good question, a very common question. A lot of you guys write to me saying you have gel farms. Get rid of the gel, guys. Um, for those of you who don't know, the gel farms are very, very bad for ants. Look up our gel farm video called Dog Works Kibble Farm. <laughs> I use kind of a metaphor on why they are bad for ants um, and then essentially they are bad for ants because they don't have 
what's needed to sustain a full colony. Um, the gel contains electrolytes which power the workers um, and it keeps the workers alive enough to be able to make to dig and create tunnels. Um, it's a very bad product because well it just it, it doesn't give the ants the nutrients they need. They need protein as well um, and a whole bunch of other vitamins and also it's just not natural for ants to eat what they're living in right unless you're a fungus grower but that's another another thing um, and also the gel even though it has a fungicide in it it still molds when the ants create a bathroom area that part molds and the whole entire gel starts to mold it's really bad for ants as I said before and in fact I was able to coordinate with the, the distributor for Canada for these gel farms that were stocking them in like Toys R Us and stuff and inform them and so they no longer stock them in Toys R Us Canada wide. So yeah, what I would recommend is that you um, empty the gel out completely, fill it with some soil or some sand um, and then from there I would also recommend catching a colony from outside if you've got a child because if you purchase a queen ant from our GAN project. I mean, they, it usually comes with a queen and some workers and it takes a good year before it gets to a size that, um, you know, is kind of entertaining for your child. But if you are willing to take care of the ants and you're willing to culture them from just that small colony to a large colony, by all means, contact us uh, for, for our GAN project if we're selling ants in your city or go ahead and catch your own queen. And we've got tons of tutorials online to help you do that. Next. From Dominic, I had 100 ants in soil, but now they have all died. Sorry to hear that, Dominic. Better luck next time. Uh, I love these, these emails where you guys send me an update on your ants. Uh, question number nine. Justin says, should I immediately put my queen in my hybrid nest or wait until she lays eggs inside the test tube? Well, Justin, I totally, totally recommend you keep your queen in a test tube. The test tube setup for me is the best um, that you can offer for your queen. I highly suggest to people that they don't move their queens into the hybrid nest or into a formicarium right away. It often leads to the queens dying. In fact, you shouldn't move your queen until she has about 20 workers or so um, and then you can move them in and only allow them to move in on their own. That's usually the best way um, because the workers know when it's a good time to move into the formicarium. Finally, uh, question number 10 comes from Kevin. Hey Ants Canada, I was on the hunt for some queens here in North America and found these two ants, but I'm not sure if they are queens nor what type of ant they are. Please let me know. Now I looked at the photo and sadly I'm sorry, but these are Campanatus super majors. And I, uh, you know what, Kevin, you're not alone. The, I get tons of these emails and 80% of the time they are Campanatus super majors. The problem with Campanatus is the super majors, the larger workers, look very similar to the queen ants. I mean, they're, they can often be the same size or even larger. Um, the clues that show me that these are workers and not queens is because the thorax and the abdomen are rather small. Now, if you look at this photo of a Campanatus queen and compare her to your photo, you'll see that there is a difference. The thorax is a lot fatter. There's actually a, an entire different region there packed with muscles where which powered their wings. Um, you'll also see some scars there where the wings used to be. So um, the more you study photos of queens um, of various species, the more you'll get the hang of identifying whether they are queens and whether they are just large workers. And so there, some 10 questions that you guys sent in within the past 24 hours. It seems I'm getting about 12 emails <laughs> an hour so it, they're just pouring in and it's great it, they do take a lot of time to go through though so if I don't get back to you within I don't know two days or three days um, please send me another email perhaps your email got sent to our spam box which also happens um, and because it does I do check the spam folder of our company email very frequently just to make sure you don't slip away so um, if you do send us an email please be patient 
um, I get through all of the emails. Thank you guys so much and subscribe to this channel if you like this video. Love you guys and best of luck on your end keeping this year for all of you in North America and in Europe and the Northern Hemisphere. You guys are catching your queens. I'm seeing them. You guys are sending them to me. I'm so happy and proud of you guys. Be sure to check our website for the best end keeping products and the best formicariums online. We are coming out with some great products um, that are not formicariums. So be sure to look out for that in the near future. Take care guys and it's Canada signing out and love forever. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Wishing you guys luck this year on your nuptial flights. Hope you guys catch lots of queens. Now, if you want to check out more videos on this channel, be sure to check out our latest video on our brand new line of genus tailored hybrid nests. Really cool formicariums for your ants that are specifically geared to house your species of ants, whatever they may be. And also check out our very cool Solenopsis geminata playlist. It's Ant Love Forever, guys. Thanks. And don't forget to subscribe.